Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Before I get into this, I want to remind you all that all the supplies I use in today's video are listed down below with links to online stores. That'll make shopping really easy. Today's card and envelope is based on this Instagram post that I saw from the Happy Ever Crafter. She has a cool flower background and then filled in the gaps with black. I thought it would look really cool with this background stamp from Hero Arts. And I'm calling this technique a blackout background. I'm not sure what else to call it, um, but kind of the idea of taking a solid color and filling in the gaps in between all those individual shapes. So I'm going to be using this background stamp from Hero Arts, like I mentioned. This is one of their really awesome cling background stamps. This is called the Male Jumble Cling Background. I'm also going to be using the Smile Stamp and Cut set, and I'll be using that on the card for the greeting. I'm going to start with the card. You can see it right here. Um, I'm going to do the background and then stamp those sentiments right over the top. Starting out with some Nina Environmental Desert Storm cardstock. This is cut to five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to be stamping the background in Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. I chose this ink in particular because I'm going to be using a Copic marker to color around the outside of these envelope images. And I don't want the black ink to smear or smudge. This intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp is a Copic friendly ink, so it's going to work great. Because I'm going to be die cutting a circle, I thought it would be best to go ahead and pencil on the size of the circle so I don't have to color everything that won't be used. So I've chosen this size right here. It's about three and three quarters wide, and I'm just using a pencil and tracing the outer edge. I'm now using an R46 Copic marker, and I'm going to color all of those areas that are in between the envelopes. I'm not being super precise or careful with this. The, the style of this background stamp with kind of the sketchy envelopes really lets uh, the, the end user, or in my case myself, it really lets you do a little bit more of a sketchy feel. So it doesn't necessarily need to be nice and crisp and clean. So if you end up using this background in this way, you can be a little bit messy with it. You don't have to be too precious with all of those lines. You can just color to your heart's content and it's gonna look really great. So after I had all of that colored, I took the Smile Stamp and Cut set and I'm going to stamp this. I prepped it with an anti-static powder tool since I will be using some heat embossing powder. And then I stamped the Smile Sentiment in Versamark ink. I have it at an angle here because I want those envelopes to be at an angle on the finished card. So I'm stamping the Smile and also the secondary greetings at an angle. I'm sprinkling on some Burtis Monroe Alabaster embossing powder and then hitting that with my heat tool until it's smooth and melted. I then prepped that area once again with an anti-static powder tool and then stamped the words from the greeting stamp set uh, above and below the word smile. This is going to finish off that whole phrase for the greeting. Sprinkled on some more of that embossing powder and tapped off the excess and then heat set that with my heat tool. So now I'm going to take that circle die that I used before and I'm gonna hold it down with some micro pore tape and then run that through my die cutting machine. That's gonna cut a circle for my card. So before I actually adhere this to the card, I'm going to emphasize the white stamping words by adding some black around the edges. So I'm using a T-square ruler and drawing a black line above and below the third line in my greeting. And I'm doing this just because I want a really nice crisp line. And then I'm going to take a black pen or a black marker and go very carefully go all around these words. I started out using a Tombow marker, um, like a dual end uh, brush tip marker, but then eventually used a mono pen. This is the 03 size. And I switched to this pen because it was a little bit easier with a smaller tip. After I had the smaller words done, I then drew around the outside of the larger smile 
And then I just drew a line all the way around, kind of trying to keep a, an equal distance around the word. And then I filled in the gap between the word itself and that black line. And that really emphasizes all of those, uh, all of the words. Tried to fill in some of those gaps and dots with a white gel pen, but then eventually decided not to worry about it. I took some Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock and scored that at five and a half to create a top folding card. And then I used some foam adhesive to adhere that die cut circle piece onto my card front. So the card is completely finished. I'm now going to move on to my envelope for today. The envelope uses a similar technique, except instead of a red background between those envelopes, I'll be using a black background. Starting out with an A2 envelope, this one is from Paper Source. It's a similar color to the um, Nina Environmental Desert Storm card sack that I used before. It's just a nice natural craft color. And I'm also going to be stamping the background stamp in that same intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp. I did do this envelope one other time before, kind of like a trial run, and I just used a regular black marker. I didn't make it a Copic marker, and the black wasn't as even as uh, how, what I'd experienced using the red marker, so I decided to go ahead and use a Copic marker. And because of that, and I don't want the, any of the Copic uh, ink bleeding through, I did put a piece of white paper inside the envelope just to catch any of this black ink that might bleed through the envelope. I then used a C10 Copic marker and colored around all of these envelopes. Now there are some little illustrations on this background stamp like these uh, balls of string or things like that where it kind of gets lost with this dark Copic color. But I decided not to worry about that since I am going to be putting my recipient's address over the front and it's going to kind of disguise a lot of that anyway. I used a piece of white paper under the edge of the envelope so that I could color completely off the edge. I then took some white gouache and I'm going to dilute this down with just a little bit of water and then use a number two round brush from uh, Escada. This is the Escada Prado number two round brush and I'm writing on Elizabeth's name and a big thank you to Elizabeth for allowing me to use her address on this envelope. Um, if you guys ever want to be considered for mail art, if you don't mind having your address shown, there's a link in the video description or in the sidebar at my blog. Um, it's labeled for monthly giveaways. You can fill out the giveaway form there and just uh, specify the option that uh, you would allow me to use your address for mail art. And then um, I just pick people at random when I need an address for mail art. Um, and if you prefer not to have your address used but do want to enter the giveaways, it's totally okay. There's an option for that as well. So I'm uh, writing this on with this brush pen, or not a brush pen, it's just a brush. And I'm using this white gouache. Now, I mentioned before that I did kind of a trial run of this envelope, and I tried a bunch of different white mediums. I tried a white gel pen, I tried um, some like white paint markers, and none of them had a nice, bright white effect. When I tried the white gouache, that's when I got this nice bright white that I actually really enjoyed. So when I did my final envelope, I decided to use the white gouache. And um, you might get a really good effect with a, a bright white gel pen. Um, I would recommend a Jelly Roll pen or even one from Uniball, uh, the usual Signal Broad. But um, in the end, I really think the white gouache works the best. And I also did, after I letter Elizabeth's name initially. I did go over the letters and her name once more just to make sure they were completely solid and filled in. But for the most part, I had a really good result just using some white gouache. So if you are looking for a nice bright white to use on your projects, um, I really re recommend some gouache. In fact, even if you don't do lettering, but you do want to add white accents to your paintings or your cards, white gouache is a really th great thing to have on hand. I use it a lot for paint splatter or um, for holiday cards. I use it when I put snow on my cards as well. So white gouache is one of those things that um, I use quite a lot. If you watch my videos, you'll probably see it pop up pretty often. So after I had all of her name 
painted on. I then took that same Copic marker, the C10, and I drew on an area for the street address. I then grabbed a white jelly roll pen and I put her street address. Now, once again, her address is used with permission, so no worries there. And this is a number 10 jelly roll pen. The number 10 is the most wide tip of all the options when it comes to jelly roll pens. And I like to use this one when I need the white to really be visible and legible. So I use the number 10 on a lot of mail art, um, but there are thinner options if you don't want a line that's quite this thick. After I had that on there, I went back with my Copic marker and I added a thin black line out on the outside of my lettering, um, similar to what I did on the card. This is just really going to emphasize Elizabeth's name. Now, I thought it kind of looked okay without this black detail added, but in the end, I'm glad I did it because it really does finish off this entire area and gives it a more complete look. It also really helps Elizabeth's name stand out. I think it looks really, really cool. Now, as I went around her name, I went around just once with a pretty thin line, and then I ended up thickening it up just a little bit um, just to make sure that it really stands out. I also made sure to color in the interior areas of the letters like on the Z, the A, the B, the E, and also the top of this H, um, just because I really want to make sure that those areas um, stand out and they don't look um, odd compared to everything else that's colored in. So like I said before, I did go around and thicken up those edges just a little bit. I think it really makes her name stand out. So the last thing to do is to add some postage stamps. You guys know me, I like my vintage postage stamps. And the way I put these on is I spray some water into a paper towel, press that postage stamp onto that damp paper towel, which uh, activates the adhesive, and then press that down directly onto my envelope. So I used a forever stamp, a five cent vintage stamp, and then also a 37 cent vintage stamp. This is plenty of postage for this envelope to uh, reach Elizabeth in Bend, Oregon. So th those are my projects for today. A really simple card and envelope. I think this blackout technique would look great with large floral backgrounds or anything like that. I think it would look really, really neat. Thanks so much for watching today. I have three more videos on screen for you, all featuring mail art. I love doing mail art. I haven't in a while, and I've done a few videos recently with mail art, so I hope you'll check those out. Thanks so much for subscribing and thumbsing up this video. That lets me know you like it, and I will see you in another video very, very soon.